This little piece of gum is a three-course dinner. Bull. No, roast beef. But I haven't got it quite right yet. Willy Wonka candy has been around for as long as we can remember. But how much do you really know about what's behind all those sweet treats? Find out with the top 10 untold truths of Willy Wonka Candy Company. Come on. Let's boogie. Its origins lie in fiction. How did you like the chocolate factory, Charlie? I think it's the most wonderful place in the whole world. The Willy Wonka brand started with Roald Dahl's children's novel, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. In the novel, the chocolate factory in question is owned by the eccentric Willy Wonka. The book was so popular that they made a movie in 1971. And that movie was so popular they remade it in 2005, featuring Johnny Depp as Willy Wonka himself. The movies have no doubt made a lasting impressions in our culture today. Everyone knows what an Oompa Loompa is, but one of the most long-standing parts of the franchise are the products. I'll ask you one more time, are you sure you didn't eat anything in my factory? No. The Wonka brand has grown beyond fiction and has become something that the everyday consumer can enjoy. While movie tie-ins are popular in the candy industry, no one has done it quite as well as the Wonka brand. So how did this brand come to be? Well, the director of the 1971 movie, Mel Stewart, said that the Wonka brand was made real by producer David Wolper. Wolper apparently had contact with Quaker Oats, who told him that they wanted to make a candy bar based on the franchise. Eventually they decided to take the deal, and that was the beginning of the famous Wonka brand. I do admire Wonka. His factory has zero government regulation, slave labor, and an indoor boat. Wonka started small. I was living my dream of owning a shop that was charming and adorable and impossible not to like. Originally, Wonka only offered two or three candies, but since David Wolper had an unbelievable ability to sell anything, the brand grew rapidly. At first, there was the Wonka chocolate bar that everyone knew so well, and and then the everlasting gobstoppers, which in the film were said to change color and flavor and never get any smaller. You can suck them and suck them and suck them and they'll never get any smaller. They also advertised Oompa Loompa candies, which were peanut butter chocolate. After the first few years, the company started to expand its collection. This was when nerds came to be. Tiny sugary candies packaged in brightly colored boxes, as well as pixie sticks, sweet tarts, and Wonka Fun Dip. Quaker also made it a point to sell other Wonka brand merchandise, including a Wonka chocolate bar making kit that could be ordered by mail. Children from the 70s had the opportunity to turn their own kitchens into the Wonka Chocolate Factory. We'd be lying if we said we weren't a bit jealous. In 1988, the Willy Wonka brand was bought by Nestle, and today, Wonka Nerds, Wonka Runts, Wonka Oompas, and Wonka Laffy Taffy are all part of the Nestle family. They will buy anything! The first movie. I book a movie. Book. Oh. In Pure Imagination, a novel written by Mel Stewart, the director of the first Willy Wonka film, the making of Willy Wonka is discussed and the author's personal take on the morals of the story is provided. According to Stewart, the only reason he made the film in the first place was because of his 11-year-old daughter, Madeline. He says that he never would have read something like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, but his daughter liked it so much she asked him to make it into a movie. <laughs> Of course, his daughter didn't know how difficult it was to get a feature film produced, but Stewart was willing to do anything for his daughter. So he showed the book to a producer and friend of his, David L. Walper, who, by chance, had a scheduled meeting with the Quaker Oats Company, which wanted a vehicle to introduce a new chocolate bar. In a passage of his book, Stewart remembers that Wolper never quite read the book, but he notes that Wolper knew the story and told Quaker Oats, I've got the perfect thing. It's a movie about a man who has a chocolate factory and makes Wonka bars. Give me the money to make this picture. Well, how could they say no? Shut up and take my money! Willy Wonka Cocktail Bar it's a bar! If you're looking for a sugar high and live in Sydney, Australia, you might be in luck. Candyland is a pop-up cocktail bar hosted at the Wonderland Bar. Candyland's decor is based on Willy Wonka's chocolate factory, so if you're craving a sweet treat, you know exactly where to go. You can get tickets, costing around $40, for a 90-minute session in a bar built on fresh green grass. Try some of my grass. Please have a plate. Please do. 
It's so delectable. Oh, and don't forget the rainbow lollipops and edible surprises around every corner. Just like in Willy Wonka, nearly everything is made out of candy, except for the Oompa Loompas. The 90-minute session allows you to explore Candyland, get your hands on a bunch of candy, and even create seamed cocktails or fizzy lifting drinks. The bar even hosts special parties, which you can buy tickets for online. There was supposed to be a Candyland party in May 2021, but extenuating circumstances forced the venue to cancel. Aw, shucks. Candyland has promised to return in a big way, something that Sydney has never seen before. Well, we'll definitely be keeping our eyes out for that. We're scheduled for Tuesday. The golden ticket contest was real. Where's my golden ticket? I want my golden ticket! While we all loved it when little Charlie Bucket got his hands on the golden ticket, there was still a little part of us that wished it were real and we could have won it too. Well, turns out we got our chance back in 2005. The Willy Wonka Candy Company actually launched a search for the golden ticket as a contest tie-in to the 2005 film adaptation. Just like five lucky kids got a golden ticket in the film, five kids in real life had the chance to find one in their Wonka candies. I find a golden ticket. As a prize for finding a ticket, kids got the chance to choose which prize they'd like to win based on the candy they enjoy. The golden ticket grand prizes included a Wonka bar prize of $10,000 in cash, a Wonka donuts prize of a European vacation, a Sweet Tarts Shockers prize of a private shopping spree, a Nerds or Nerds Rope prize which was to be digitized at a Los Angeles video animation studio, and a Sparkle Jerry Cherry Laffy Taffy prize of a trip to a fantasy sports camp. Aside from those grand prizes, contestants also had the chance to win one of 100 first prizes, an official Charlie and the Chocolate Factory movie pack, including a t-shirt, calendar, poster, video game, soundtrack, book, and board game, and a year's supply of Wonka candy. You are Willy Wonka and I got the golden ticket! Success in non-chocolate products. It seems I'm temporarily light. <laughs> While most people associate Willy Wonka with chocolate, that's not where this company found its most success. You might be surprised to find that the bulk of the company's products, including their most successful ones, were of the non-chocolate variety. Some of these products include Fun Dip, Runs, Kazoozles, and Nerds. And while many of their chocolate products have been canceled or discontinued, their non-chocolate products have continued to go strong. For example, both Laffy Taffy and Bottle Caps have consistently earned the company profits, outperforming their chocolate products. So why have their chocolate products not gained as much success? Well, maybe it's because of the competitive nature of the chocolate world, or how difficult it is to make a chocolate bar imaginative or wacky. So just imagine all this, but with chunks of all that. In any case, the sugar-based treats have reigned supreme for the Willy Wonka Candy Company. One of the brand's most popular products is Nerds, now a part of the Pereira Candy Company. These oddly shaped and colorful candies have won over the hearts of millions since their invention in the 80s. Another example is Sweet Tarts, which were invented after parents wanted a less messy treat. This sour and sweet candy was an important part of our childhoods and will continue to bring joy for years to come. Oh. Yeah. Problematic Oompa Loompas. Why, those are the Grunkalunkas. They work here in the Slurm factory. Unfortunately, there are a few inexcusable themes in this children's novel. One of the most glaring issues is the Oompa Loompas. In the original illustrations for Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, the Oompa Loompas were drawn as offensive caricatures from Africa. And what's worse is their story. In the novel, Willy Wonka claims that he found them deep in the jungle and that he brought them over to work for him, their only salary being cocoa beans. Yikes. It wasn't until 1972, nearly a decade later, that a wide-ranging attack on the book was published by Eleanor Cameron. Getting open now? He doesn't talk, it's fun. Dahl wasn't happy with this, and he and Cameron had many public back and forths in various American literary journals. Eventually, Dahl's publishers decided that the Oompa Loompas weren't appropriate, and so they released a revised version in which the Oompa Loompas became hippies with long golden hair and rosy white skin. When the first film was being made, these revisions hadn't happened yet. Stewart said he was already uncomfortable with the portrayal, so he decided to make the Oompa Loompas an unusual 
unusual color, and that's how we got the orange-faced, green-haired workers for Wonka's factory. Well, they can't be real people. Well, of course they're real people. There wasn't originally going to be music. Fall musical is coming up, and we're not doing Grease again. I can't. I'm not doing it. There is perhaps nothing more memorable than the music in the Willy Wonka movie, but did you know that the director didn't actually want musical numbers in it? In his book, he states that he didn't want songs because he was afraid the film would end up being like a Disney movie, and he didn't like Disney movies. Eventually, he was convinced to include some songs, and he brought in the songwriting team of Leslie Brickus and Anthony Newley. The two used Dahl's first draft of the script to deliver hits such as The Candy Man, I've Got a Golden Ticket, and Oompa Loompa Doompa Dee Doo. The songs were so popular that the duo earned an Academy Award nomination for Best Scoring, Adaptation, and Original Song Score. Because of the success of Willy Wonka's musical numbers, Stewart concedes that he was wrong about including music. Are you okay? I'm fine. How many musical numbers are there in the movie Zootopia? Just the one. Yeah, he's okay. Another little musical tidbit involves the music that opens up the factory. Wonka plays a little tune, which is the overture to The Marriage of Figaro. Stewart states that he should have played Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, but when one of the characters says Rachmaninoff, it would have been funny, since most people think the composer was Rachmaninoff. Stewart states that this is one of his regrets about the film, but seeing as most viewers were children, we doubt it would have made a big difference. Rachmaninoff. The Willy Wonka Candy Company Premium Confections. Let's work flow it, Wonka. The world deserves more chocolate. I should be the judge of that. After years of creating one-of-a-kind candies for people of all ages, the Wonka Candy Company decided to release something a bit different in 2010. The Wonka Exceptionals line is advertised as a collection of delicious, decadent, imaginative, and whimsical chocolate and fruit-flavored premium confections. The new chocolates were developed with equal attention paid to the taste inside as the presentation on the outside, and it shows. The collection includes three varieties, each available in full-sized tablet bars and bags of individually wrapped minis. Slugworth Sizzler, Wonka Scrumdiddlyumptious. Whichever's the biggest. Try a Wonka Scrumdiddlyumptious. Firstly, the Wonka Scrumdiddlyumptious chocolate bar is made with bits of scrumptious toffee pieces, crispy cookies, and crunchy peanuts wrapped in milk chocolate. Secondly, the Wonka chocolate Chocolate Waterfall Bar tempts the taste buds with a combination of creamy white chocolate swirled in milk chocolate. And finally, the Wonka Domed Dark Chocolate Bar is made of rich, velvety dark chocolate topped with smooth milk chocolate drops. Talk about variety! While many people associate Wonka with chocolate, Nestle decided to include fruit jellies in their new line, too. These are called Wonka Fruit Jellies and Wonka Fruit Marvels. They are perfect for an everyday indulgence or spontaneous gift giving. Fruit jellies are square, soft, and sugar sprinkled, and come in a box featuring Wonka's familiar and vivid purple. Flavors include grapefruit, red apple, and goji berry. The fruit marvels are hard candies with soft centers, delicately sugar dusted. Clementine orange, white grape, and pomegranate represent the delightful array of flavors that tantalize the palate. If you have a sweet tooth, these are for you. I think I'm okay with Candy World. Rebranded to the Nestle Candy Shop. They've got no memories for me. Just data. In 2017, the internet went into a fit when the Nestle Corporation changed its online branding. What used to be the Willy Wonka Candy Company became the Nestle Candy Shop. There was no more nostalgic purple logo, but rather a sad, bubbly font that didn't hold the same charm and whimsy. Of course, people were angry. Where was the branding from their childhood? People took to social media, claiming that they'd never recover from this or that they were beyond angry. They've ruined my childhood! On top of that, because of the slow decline of Wonka sales, Nestle started focusing on their health-focused brands such as Freshly or Sweet Earth. While customers were disappointed that their childhood brand was gone, it wasn't all bad news. Once Nestle realized it no longer wanted to focus on selling candy, it sold all Willy Wonka Candy Company products to Ferrero, the company behind Nutella and Ferrero Rocher. Well, at least we can trust it's in good hands. I just wanted to give you an opportunity. Show us some love and tap or click on another great video. Hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell.